What's happening? A female who is definitely on something she is losing her mind. I don't know why she's acting like this, but we have to calm her down to get her out of here safely. You should be able to see Cody as you pull up. There's Cody right there. Cody is our radio term for Saskatoon City Police. As we arrive, we see multiple Code 8 vehicles on scene. It could potentially mean a lot of things. It could be a dangerous situation. There could be weapons there. Yeah, there's a door here. It's a lot of commotion going on. Before we get to the front door, I can hear the patients screaming. Hi there. So immediately I know that there's a situation going on that's completely out of control, and we're gonna have to figure out a way to get control over this. What's happening? A female who is definitely on something she is losing her mind. Is she kind of a harm to herself, do you think? When you can hear somebody screaming like that from the street, before you even get to her, you know her level of agitation is extremely high. It kind of is that blood curdling kind of scream that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. It's an extremely tight space. She's face down on the floor. There's a cop on either end of her holding her down. Uh, mental health history, uh, bipolar, depression, anxiety. <laughs> Hush. The only way that I can physically give this patient an IV is to sit on her legs and have police officers on either side of her holding her down. <laughs> have you ever seen an act like this before? Any allergies? Not that I know of. I know she, she, when she drinks liquor, she has a reaction. <laughs> what about uh, drugs, street drugs? I'm going to give her some medicine in, in the arm. It's going to calm her down. And then she'll either walk out of here or we'll carry her out of here. I don't know why she's acting like this. But we have to calm her down to get her out of here safely because I don't want her to get hurt, okay? We're at the point where, regardless the nature of the hysteria, we're going to have to sedate her to transport her to the hospital. There's just no other way to do it at this point. I don't want to sedate her so much that she's laying flat on the floor and now we have to breathe for her. But I want to give her just enough that she's calm and we can walk her out of the house. Okay, so I've given her some medicine to help calm her down. You can tell she's not screaming so much. All right, baby. Just those girls here. Calm down. Still your breathing now. We'd like to walk her out of here and take her up to University Hospital. Did you want to come with us? I can't. Give us a minute to get her onto the stretcher, maybe, and then you can change. Her. Where's my mother? She's here. I think I broke my glasses. I'm gonna give her another 2.5. How much total? No! She said this five. She needs a higher dosage. Give me a higher dosage. She needs a higher dosage. It's tough to stay neutral when somebody spits on you like that. You just can't take it personally. She was kind of out of options. Her hands were tied, her feet were tied. It's not my job to judge how she got here. There's lots of things that she could be dealing with in her life. It's my job to help her. The patient that we picked up earlier in the evening, I'm just glad that we got her out of the house safe as well as the rest of us. I think I broke my glasses. Unfortunately, we see this a lot. She could be a, a nice, normal person on any other given day, but when she decides to take drugs, this is our outcome.